amidst the lush, hilly landscapes of Sabah, we found ourselves in awe of nature's grandeur. Here, in the vicinity of the majestic Mount Kinabalu, we explored the captivating beauty of Sabah. Join us as we take you on a captivating four-day twilight adventure through the enchanting wonders of Kundasang and Kota Kinabalu. My name is Hazik, and welcome to Sabah, the land below the wind. Day 1, 28 September 2023 What's up guys, Exact Productions here. Welcome back to another vlog. It's 5.30 in the morning. Let's go to Kota Kinabalu. It's been about at least 2 hours since we left KLIE at 7.30 in the morning and finally at around 10 am, we have arrived at Kota Kinabalu International Airport. Soon after, it was time to collect our rental car. The car we chose is a Perdua Beza 1.3X, which I thought is a decently sized sedan for a family of four, equipped with a rather powerful 1.3 liter engine to help us tackle the potentially steep roads throughout our journey. For a rental price of only about 150 ringgit per day, I think it's pretty worth the choice. Of course, since we are embarking on a long journey to Kundasang, we obviously had to refill our car at a nearby petrol station. After a quick refueling process at a nearby petrol station and a short stop over at Jama Salim restaurant for lunch, we headed to one of Sabah's popular attractions and that is Tamparuli Bridge. Hey guys, so you know the Tower Bridge from London and the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco? Well, Sabah has this bridge. It's Tampa Ruli Bridge. Look at that. It has a history on its own. The suspension bridge may have gained so much attention from both tourists and locals. But don't forget that Tampa Ruli Bridge started off as a low concrete bridge constructed in the 1930s and has sustained so many flood events. Now, if you'd like to know more about the story, you can find it on this structure here. But personally, only God knows if this story is really true or not because it seems, hmm, like a fairy tale, I guess? It's a little shaky, so we gotta be really careful as we walk across the bridge. I'm amazed to see how sturdy the bridge is, even though the bridge is like years old. Very short. It's pretty hot, so I think we gotta get back down quick. As we continued our journey towards Kundasang, we did notice the road started to turn a little bit steeper. In my opinion, this really makes a lot of sense as Kundasang is literally right at the foot of Mount Kinabalu itself. After more than two hours since we left Kota Kinabalu, we stopped over at a somewhat popular destination named Pekan Nabalu. There is a wide variation of goods being sold over here, which includes local foods, fruits, outfits and also handicrafts. At the back of Pakanabalu, there is a viewpoint site for you to see and enjoy the view of Mount Kinabalu. Unfortunately for us, we didn't get to see it because... Mount Kinabalu is a very <laughs> mountain because it was covered in clouds. Well, no wonder, just look at that guys. No wonder why the peaks of Mount Kinabalu are covered in clouds at the moment. Maybe afternoon's not the right time to see them. Probably have to wait till the morning to get clear views of Mount Kinabalu. So we have to be patient for a bit. Otherwise, we have gotten a really awesome view. It's almost 3 p.m. and it's about time to head to our accommodation, which required us to take the Tanompok Bundu Tuhan Road. And I can tell you, with the winding roads ups and downs and occasional lack of barrier fences, it was a pretty extreme one to be honest, so be really careful when driving on roads like this. After battling through the ups and downs of the road, we finally arrived at our accommodation. And nope, it is not Honon Ridge, it's actually located a bit further down and it is named Honon White Chimney Cottage. Yeah. Okay, so we have just arrived at our accommodation for the night, which is at White Chimney Cottage. Look at that, there is a freaking 
duck coming in our way. As you can see here. It looks gorgeous on the outside and I hope it is also gorgeous in the inside as well. Yup, it really is gorgeous. Stepping inside the accommodation and we were greeted by a wonderful interior which I think comes with a pretty contemporary and elegant design. It also comes with plush furnishings too, from large comfortable sofas to cushioned beddings, which I think all together creates an atmosphere of comfort and luxury. And on top of that, there's even a balcony which allows us to overlook at Mount Kinabalu. But as I mentioned before, the mountain just seems shy right now. We're just gonna unload our bags and uh, rest, get some prayers done, and uh, let's see what we're up to this evening. Stay tuned, guys. It is around 6 p.m. and we headed up to Holden Ridge for dinner. Oh. Look who's here. It's Oyen, I think. <laughs> Hello. 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 Oyen. It's good to know that there is a cafe here. Now I did notice a plethora of dishes to choose from, which includes western dishes. But after going through the menu and checking on the dishes availability, I decided to settle on a pattaya fried rice, which I think overall tasted pretty good. Having woken up pretty early and having been on a long drive from Kota Kinabalu, it is finally time to let our hair down in preparation for our next day in Sabah. Day 2, 29 September 2023. What's up guys, it's currently day 2 of our trip here at Sabah and SubhanAllah, we are currently surrounded by a gorgeous view of the hills and mountains all around us. Speaking of mountains, there's one mountain that particularly stands out and I think you can guess which mountain I'm talking about and that is just right in front of me, the one and only Mount Kinabalu. Wow, just seeing this literally takes my breath away. It is the tallest mountain in Malaysia right over there. 4,000-ish meters measured from some of the highest peaks of Mount Kinabalu to the sea level. And just seeing this mountain, it just goes to show the the greatness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Just look at this mountain. It's insane. Insanely huge. And one thing that I should actually point out is that the scenery here just sort of reminds me of the kind of landscapes you might see in Switzerland at the very least. Also in terms of the temperature as well because over here it is so so freaking cold. So we had to actually put on our jacket. You know the, the, the water that we used to actually do our toilet businesses and whatsoever was just so 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 cold. But Hamla this accommodation does come with water heater so that we are able to enjoy a hot shower. This does help Hamla help out a little bit in enduring this pretty cold temperature so yeah it was about a 30 minute drive from Hoonan White Chimney Cottage and here we are at Kundasan but before we do anything else here we really need to satiate our hunger and quench our thirst. So we stopped over at Intan restaurant and cafe. Where I found something pretty interesting. Ooh, we have nasi goreng kundasang. That's interesting. I wanna try. <laughs> this is it, nasi goreng kundasang. First impression kind of looks like this. Beef itself looks like this. And this rice just looks kind of similar to that of Kampung, maybe I, I don't know, maybe that's just me, but it's actually nasi goreng sayur in the menu. Mm -hmm. It's good overall. Some of the dagu is yet yeah, it's almost 11 in the morning and it's time for us to head to Desa Dairy Farm. Now this isn't your typical farm, 
covering an area of about 199 hectares. It stands out for its breathtaking setting amidst the rolling hills of Kundasan. I couldn't help but be captivated by the striking black and white markings of the cows grazing at expansive fields. Okay guys, we have arrived at this dairy farm and I'm so surprised by the sheer number of visitors coming into this farm. Sheer number. Despite the fact that there are actually limited number of sessions which you actually need to book in advance uh, prior to coming here. But it's price because it's um, it is not public holiday. Yesterday it was a public holiday. So let's see where to go. I think my family is heading that way so let's go there. We then made our way inside. But we had the opportunity to feed cows with grass or bottled milk. It seems like this cow is full. They don't seem interested to eat or drink anything at the moment. I believe that's a milking parlor where cows will be milked. Fantastic! There's also an assortment of dairy products being sold over here, such as fresh milk and yes, their famous gelato ice cream. Check this out guys. This is gelato, chocolate gelato with Oreo flakes. Okay, let's see how this gelato tastes like. Let's try. Bismillah. Mmm. It tastes fresh, but I'm not sure how to describe the taste in words. Okay, but uh, I don't know. This actually has like sugar in it because it doesn't doesn't taste that sweet. Uh, if you ask me. Overall, it tastes good. It kind of reminds me of the. One of the Baskin Robbins ice creams, such as the Chocolate Mousse Royal flavor from, from Baskin Robbins. I think this taste kind of reminds me of that, la, if you ask me. So yeah, that's probably my best description on this taste. La. I might be totally wrong here. Your taste buds are different from my taste buds. So <laughs> let me know your thoughts in the comments if you have actually tasted this before. But still, regardless of how you guys describe this taste, it still tastes pretty good. I like it. Thumbs up from me, from this gelato. Yes, we also tried out the natural yogurt flavor as well. Now, personal taste preferences vary. Some might find it somewhat plain, while others might perceive it as kind of tangy or tart. What do you guys think? Please comment below. Anyway, let's move on. Our next stop was an amazing garden at the Highlands, named Mesilau Highland Strawberry Farm. Okay. So it's almost 1 o'clock in the afternoon and we're now here at Mesilau Highland Strawberry Farm. Are these actually real buildings? They're not real. They're just there for aesthetics, I guess. Okay, so it costs about 7 ringgit per 100 grams of, I don't know, strawberry that we get over here. I'm not sure. Let's go in. Unfortunately for us, yeah. it seems like the strawberries were not available at the time when we came here. I don't see any strawberries. But I guess the plants here might probably grow up and produce strawberries in the future. It's just a matter of when. But fret not, there is a cafe here that sells a variety of delicious strawberry based <laughs> desserts. Wow, just cute. You also get a voucher which gives you a discount of 2 weekend. Which you buy here. Look at that. We have a cat. Hey, what's your name? Zebra? After exploring the strawberry farm, we headed back to the Kundasang town again. But this time, we decided to pay a visit to the Kundasang War Memorial, which was established back in 1962. Okay, so we're just trying to kill a bit of time as we wait for the right time for us to check in to our new accommodation for our second day. And to kill a bit of time, we, we are going to be visiting this one. It's called Kundasang War Memorial. Let's go and check out. So for us, it's about 5 ringgit per person with my cut. 
Australian and the UK flags. Something to do with these nations here at this memorial. Okay, looking at this, I don't know, sculpture or however you want to call this, you can see that this memorial is actually built to remember the loss of the Australian and British prisoners who died in this incident and i noticed some figures which are pretty interesting out of the 2500 prisoners only six came home how interesting is that fact oh, yeah it makes sense to have an english garden as part of the memorial just look at them i just don't know the names <laughs> these are the names of the of the people who have passed away a long list of those who have passed away from this whole incident. So I think this list is divided into two different categories. We have those of Australia and those from British. We have over here like 1787. Then we have over here 641. And it looks like I passed away as a result of the death march from Sandakan to Ranau. So yep, lest we forget. Yeah, let's go. It is almost 3 p.m. which means it's almost time to check in at our new accommodation which is Shamin's homestay. But more specifically, we were interested to try out its fantastic glamping domes. Let's explore our glamping dome. Now the time when we booked, the price of this accommodation was 250 ringgit per night per dome. Stepping inside the glamping dome, we were greeted by a cocoon of comfort featuring the cozy elegance of cushioned beddings, which I think has beckoned us to unwind. On top of that, the glamping dome comes with large transparent windows which give us an opportunity to immerse ourselves in nature with the expansive panoramic views of Kundasang and of course, Mount Kinabalu. It's around 6 in the evening and it's time to have our dinner. For tonight, we decided to head over Putri Nabal. This place is quite huge and we couldn't help but gaze at Mount Kinabalu a couple of times as the clouds slowly reveal its peaks. I mean, who wouldn't like to dine with this magnificent view? Day 3, 30th September 2023. What's it guys? Day 3 of our trip at Sabah. It's currently 5.54 in the morning. We're heading to Sodikon Hill. It's great that we stayed at Shamin's homestay yesterday because Sodikon Hill is only about 10 minute drive from here which I think is kind of suitable for those who prefers to set off a bit late. Keep in mind, you need to get yourself a visitor tag before you can start hiking. Okay, it is about 8 minutes past 6 in the morning and we have already arrived at Sosodikon Hill and we are now starting our climb up to the top. The pathway is unsurprisingly rocky so you have to be really careful with our steps as we head to the top. For your information, Sosodikon is a decent word referring to a place for laying traps to catch wildlife. As we neared the peak, the viewing platform started coming into view. We then climbed up the platform and wow, what a rewarding view that we got. There it is. We did it. After soaking in that insanely beautiful view, it was time to head back down. 
with Mount Kinabalu still in the background, we thought we'd go for a short drive near Masilau Golf Club. Unfortunately, we couldn't trespass the Golf Club area but still, a breathtaking view of Mount Kinabalu up close nonetheless. After a short stopover at our accommodation prior to checking out, and as rain fell, it was time to bid farewell to our clamping dome accommodation. But before we left Kundasang, we decided to head to a somewhat unique restaurant for breakfast. It is the BW Bus Restaurant. I was amazed by a variety of western dishes that the restaurant has to offer for us. And look at this! A bus ticket that we got for 5 ringgit each, which can be exchanged for foods and drinks. Talk about boarding a real bus. Oh wait, it actually is real. I'm wondering if this is an old bus in the 1900s, in the 1990s or whatever. But it looks to me like it is a very old bus that has been repurposed for <laughs> I feel like this restaurant acts as a quick pit stop for a meal and rest before we headed back to Kota Kinabalu. After about two days staying in Rana or Kundasang, it was finally time to head back down towards Kota Kinabati. But we headed for our new accommodation, Pelagus. Located above Oceanus Waterfront Mall, this accommodation provides easy access to a number of places within the city, which includes Warisan Square, Tudak Waterfront, etc. On top of that, this accommodation offers a fantastic sea view and a very spacious interior with a modern look, period. As night fell, we headed out for dinner. 6.41 in the evening. Getting dark out here pretty quickly here in Sabah, at Sabah. And on our way for dinner. We better walk because, as you can tell by the traffic, we have faced a little bit of difficulty in getting out of our accommodation just to find a place to eat. <laughs> it was a couple minute walk from our accommodation and we've arrived at our location for dinner, which is Todak Waterfront. Now mind you, there are so many things to choose from, but for us, we went for Seri 3 Rasa Seafood, which I noticed has a lot of seafood options, such as fish, prawn, crab, squid, etc. Personally, I would recommend that you go in a group so that you can try a wide variation of them. I honestly think the foods that we tasted here are pretty well cooked. Taste-wise, mmm, very yummy. Mmm, tastes really good. With hunger satiated and thirst quenched, we decided to head to Pasar Ikan Masin in Kota Kinabalu. Like before, there are a number of lots to choose from. But for what I observed, there is a wide variation of dried seafood sold here. For our case, we went to lot 19 as one of my relatives happened to know its owner well. But let's also hear why you should come to this lot as well. Untuk uh, penonton yang tengah tengok video ni, okay, so kenapa mereka perlu datang ke kedai bang? Kalau nak beli ikan bilis ke, kena datang ke kedai sini. Ah, so ini dia punya kualiti ikan bilis tu memang bagus lah. Satu bagus, lepas tu kualiti, harga pun memang murah. Berpatutan eh? Ya, berpatutan. Dengan tu eh? Baik, baik. Day 4 1st October 2023 Whilst we still have ample amount of time left before our flight back home we decided to do as much sightseeing as possible. One of the places we're interested to go to is Tanjung Aru Beach. Very windy out here. So 
Unfortunately, we couldn't be here for long because Mother Nature has something in store. It looks like there's heavy rain coming. So we better hurry up <laughs> and head back to our car as soon as possible. Then, we headed for the State Mosque of Sabah, which is distinguished by its unique honeycomb cladding of its large main dome, accompanied by smaller golden dome and a slender yet artistically crafted minaret. This mosque is ingeniously designed with an elongated hexagonal shape, oriented or tilted towards the Qibla, providing a spacious internal layout. As world time approached, we headed for another mosque, which is the Kota Kinabalu City Mosque, another popular tourist attraction. Surrounded by a man-made lagoon, this mosque is sometimes known as the Floating Mosque. Step into the inside, I can see how its architecture seems to have drawn inspiration from that of Masjid Nabawi in Medina. Awesome! We then stopped over at one Borneo for lunch. Now for you guys, there's a lot of restaurants over there for you to go to. But for us, another relative of mine just happened to reside over there. And I was told that she owns an awesome bakery business called Aibu Bakes. We have tasted one of her biscuits and cheesecakes and wow! They tantalize our taste buds with a good blend of gentle sweetness and a somewhat cheesy richness. So for those of you who happen to be at Kota Kinabalu and are interested to try out, do head over to our WhatsApp or her IG business account in the links below. It was then finally time to head back to Kota Kinabalu International Airport. So it is currently 6 4 in the evening. It's almost getting dark here at Kota Kinabalu, and our plane that will bring us back to KLIA has officially arrived. That said, I think it's about time that we wrap up this video with a couple of words. Let's with hearts full of cherished memories, we bid farewell to the enchanting landscapes and warm embraces of Sabah. I can't help but reflect on those moments when we gazed upon the hilly or mountainous landscapes of Sabah with the towering presence of Mount Kinabalu in the background during the early morning hours. This journey may end, but the stunning vistas and the overall beauty that we've witnessed shall continue to linger in our hearts. Sabah, till we meet again. Okay, I better go to play now. So peace out, stay positive.